Up your ass, Cole. Why don't you do your own fucking leg work, you rat fuck? Say it again, Rummy. It's long overdue, but finally I have seen the first season of True Detective. And after hearing the high praise it received when it first came out, do I think that the show lived up to those expectations? And my answer is a resounding yes. True Detective's first season is incredible. HBO's crime drama follows Louisiana police detectives Marty Hart and his partner, Rust Cole. The show opens up with a ritualistic murder scene and our two detectives are in charge of finding this serial killer responsible. As the viewer, we see the origins of this case. Dora Lang, the body which we see in the opening sequence, is only the beginning. And the more Rust and Marty dig into this case, the more missing persons reports and unsolved murders continue to be linked to this one. In the present day, 17 years following on from that initial murder case, the pair are brought in for questioning. They say they got their man back in 1995. But after the investigation is reopened and they are putting the pieces back together, they begin to wonder if they truly caught the man that they were looking for. Did one of them, even the main one, happen to slip through their fingers? For us, we knew that answer as the first six episodes were bringing us up to speed and working towards the case and the story's conclusion. And once episode seven arrived, with Marty and Rust having reassembled all the missing pieces on the board, we stayed right where we were in the present day as the pair of them looked to finally solve this murder mystery spanning close to two decades. Now the biggest draw of True Detective is its two leads. Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey are both superb. Both of them put in hard-working and dazzling performances, but when putting them side by side, it has to be McConaughey's brooding, damaged and edgy performances rust that keeps your eyes fixed to that TV screen. His charisma and acting chops are on full display as he gives bleak and grim monologues to his partner and half the time, probably more than that, poor old Marty has to find a way of making Russ just shut up. His nihilistic view of the world made him not get along with many who were around him. He condemned belief, meaning, and in the wrong hands the character could have easily come across as arrogant or egotistical, but not in McConaughey's. He was outstanding in every scene, but his troubles were much different than that of his partners. Marty struggled in his personal life. His heavy drinking, his infidelity, these insecurities gave us a man with just as many troubles as Rust, but coming from a completely different angle. Harrelson too was outstanding and deserves just as much credit, and you couldn't help but smile sometimes at the banter the pair had with one another. They seemed to work together effortlessly, and for two people who were both damaged in their own ways, they succeeded in forming a broken but functional bond that captured our attention for every moment of this series. The supporting cast was vital as well. Michelle Monaghan playing Marty's wife was key in more ways than one. Her discovering Marty's secrets, tearing apart the pair's complicated relationship, was the reason Marty and Rust hadn't spoken to one another in over a decade. The two cops in the present also were there to throw in that lingering bit of doubt towards the viewer, making us wonder if in fact Rust was hiding something. A few may say nothing much happens in this series, at least in terms of action, and to an extent that is true, especially in the first three episodes, but it isn't about that. If you're here for the action, you will probably be put off by this show. Instead, the focus is going deeper into the lives of Marty and Rust, delving on their flaws, their personal issues. And if you really are craving action, things do start to heat up in episodes four and five, with the pace quickening and the action starting. And applauds must go to Errol Childress, you creepy ass son of a bitch. We never saw you properly until the finale, and he only appeared in three episodes in total, two of them being brief, but you left your mark in your short screen time. He helped give us a finale that I believe in many people's books could be the best of the lot. That prolonged manhunt around Carcosa had me on the edge of my seat. Seeing Rust walk through the shrines, the bones, all of it was disturbing as hell. And when Childress finally struck, I genuinely didn't know if either Rust or Marty would survive that fateful encounter. But at the end of the day, and 17 years after it first began, 
Rust and Marty finally got their man. Take off your mask. My overall verdict for the first season of True Detective is a 9 out of 10. It is a magnificent season of television. The narrative is incredible. The way the story is told and the smart shifting between past and present made the story all more compelling. It is a down-to-earth and realistic feeling crime drama. The focus isn't on the action and thrilling the audience once or twice an episode, it's on the characters and how they develop with everything around them. Some highlights to speak about were Rust going undercover with the biker gang in episode 4, partaking in that home invasion in order to try and squeeze some information out of a former friend. And whilst all that was happening, in the present the two detectives were grilling the pair, seemingly indicating that Rust himself was involved in this case somehow. I never believed that to be true, because as the viewer we had never seen Rust do anything to implicate himself. He was just tenacious in trying to crack the case. Then in the next episode we had the shootout at prime suspect Reggie Ledoux's place, which improved on that episode even more. And of course I cannot fail to mention the finale with that intense manhunt and the case finally coming to a close. It was becoming apparent with the story being told to us in the way it was that as we approached the last quarter of the season it would leave us solely in the present. And it did just that. The pair spoke to one another for the first time in over a decade regarding the police grilling them. And after a bit of convincing, Marty agreed to help track down the man that might have gotten away. The finale, in all honesty, was probably my favourite episode, followed closely by episode 5. But everyone played its part in this 8 episode series. And I say only 8 episodes because I watched it all in about 4 days or so, and I could have kept going. And you know, I'm actually surprised that the show ended on quite a happy note. All the way through the series was quite grim, dark and saddening, but the moving conversation with Rust at the very end, him speaking about a warming presence that he felt when he was under, the prevailing of the light over darkness, was an emotional monologue that hits you right in the feels. They really did save the best for last, and regardless of what Russ thinks, he is one tough SOB to survive what he went through at the end there. I thought he was a goner when he was gutted by Childress. I expected him to bleed out with Marty surviving after they took down their man. So as a television show, where does this leave us? True Detective is an anthology series, meaning we get a new cast, a new crew and a new story with each new season. Creator and producer Nick Pizzolatto really has done a terrific job. I think True Detective will live long in the memory, at least this first season definitely will. So now it's time for me to go and watch the second. Though I feel it will be a mountain to climb in terms of quality to achieve the lofty heights that this first season did. That'll do it for me. What did you guys think of the first season of True Detective? And out of the partners, Marty and Rust, who was your favourite and why? I have a feeling a lot of people will say the same answer as me, and that is being Rust. How about you? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. I can smell a psychosphere. I got an idea. Let's make the car a place of silent reflection from now on. Okay? <laughs>